Right, so Keir Starmer's typical heavy-handedness with those MPs brave enough to defy his diktat now means any suspensions handed out at this point in time by his regime and going forwards in all likelihood means they won't have a job for much longer with a general election likely within the next few months. It's not like Starmer shifts very quickly to get these things dealt with after all and you cannot but help think that that is intentional given who many of these suspended people are. Of course, if that is the case, and these people know the writing is on the wall, they can use what time they have left to absolutely hammer Starmer, couldn't they? Such is the short-sightedness of his plotting here, perhaps. The diktat in question at this point, though? Well, this could be on anything at this point, but we can point to defying his stance on Israel and Palestine as one definite reason. Starmer is avowedly and unshakably pro-Israel. 30,000 Gazan deaths at Israel hands haven't budged him an inch, even as the Tories discuss Palestinian state recognition. They believe that and you'll probably believe anything. Being pro-Palestine is already being used as a reason to deselect MPs, meaning a future Labour government will be more pro-Israel than ever before. And we've got examples of that happening right now. Right, so Keir Starmer is Israel's man. Well, calumny surprise demo, tell us something new. Regular viewers might be thinking to themselves, but there does appear to be a concerted effort to push out Labour MPs that can probably be reasonably described as an awkward squad for Starmer, since these pesky people will insist on being on the left, will demonstrate sympathy and backing for the Gazan people at that, as genocide is committed against them. How dare these people show some humanity and a conscience? You can imagine the former human rights lawyer himself thinking that. Any semblance of humanity and those former legal beliefs he might once have been in possession of, now long since apparently sold to the highest Israel lobby bidder. The difference in his attitude towards Ukraine and that of Gaza stands out like a sore thumb. Well, it's being reported that patience in the Whip's office with Labour MPs apparently freelancing against the party line is causing patience in the Whip's office to wear thin. The Whip's office, eh? They wouldn't be acting of their own accord on this, would they? That would be freelancing against the party line as well, wouldn't it? They get their orders just as much as other Labour MPs do. Let's not pretend it's the Whip's office whose patience is wearing thin. It is the patience of Keir Starmer or perhaps even Peter Mandelson, whoever elected him. Perfectly believable though, isn't it? By the Whip's office, of course, with a general election on the way, these threats now carry more weight though, because if the brill-creamed exalted one doesn't deem to visit upon thee his forgiveness, then the MP in question, whoever that might be, is as good as gone. You can't stand for election for the party for as long as you are suspended by the party, after all. Very easy way for Starmer to get rid of anybody he doesn't want. You only need to look at the list of former Labour MPs currently sitting as independents to realise that. Jeremy Corbyn, of course, is the obvious one that springs to mind. Cleared of anti-Semitism by the NEC, then summarily suspended by Starmer himself in an abuse of his executive powers. But he's far from alone in there being a number of left-wing MPs who have been punished for putting what is right and the needs of their own constituents before party interests. After all, constituents are meant to come first, aren't they? Well, that certainly isn't true under Keir Starmer. Diane Abbott, for example, remains suspended for coming on for a year now, has no expectation of the whip being restored before the election, all over the wrong version of a letter being sent out, which he retracted and apologised for, but still got suspended because Starmer frankly sniffed an opportunity. Other lefties that Starmer has found opportunity to potentially rid himself of include Andy MacDonald and Claudia Webb, and now, of course, Kate Ossimore has joined them. Three black women there when the party continues to face accusations of anti-black racism, but Starmer really doesn't seem to care about that, does he? Actually, it's what has happened to Kate Ossimore that, in part, leads me into this notion of pro-Palestine deselections. Osamore, of course, was suspended because on Holocaust Memorial Day last week, she put out a message of remembrance where she included what is happening in Gaza, along with the Holocaust and other genocides that are remembered on that day, such as Cambodia, Rwanda and Bosnia. The pro-Israel groups squealed, evidently. Starmer jumped. Osamore was told to make an apology by the whips, and then all of a sudden she was suspended anyway, despite having done exactly what was asked of her. Smacks of somebody behind the scenes deciding... Here was an opportunity to rid themselves of another left-wing MP again. Someone chosen by a community that Labour behind the scenes have decided to do away with on the basis I can only assume that she isn't starmery enough. She believed in something for herself, God forbid. She's not alone in the way she thought, though. And here's where things take a turn for the more sinister. And that brings me on to a Labour MP who is still a Labour MP at time of writing, though may not be for very much longer. 
Tahir Ali might not be the first Labour MP you think of. He's the MP for Birmingham Hall Green. He was first elected in 2019, so he's still serving his first term as an MP. And if Starmer gets his way, it sounds like it will be his only term. Ali stood up in Parliament at PMQs just this week and accused Rishi Sunak of having blood on his hands following the verdict of the International Court of Justice and provisional measures that have been laid down by them against Israel. Ali shamefully was jeered on both sides, both by the Tories and others in his own party for what he said, and like Osamore, he was made to make an apology too. However, he, at least at time of writing, which is several days later, has not had the whip removed as Kate Osamore did. Double standards, perhaps, but when neither of them were actually wrong, he shouldn't have been punished at all. We are selling weapons and armaments to Israel in this country. We are manufacturing parts for their aircraft. Heck, their aircraft are coming here and the government won't tell us why. We are aiding and abetting what is happening in the Gaza Strip by Israel. And Sunak can point at Ali and say, look at the face of the Labour Party now whilst shaking his head. But he deserves his day in the Hague for complicity along with a number of others. The thing is, though, despite Tahir Ali not being suspended yet anyway, it seems Labour have no intentions of reselecting him and are determined to ensure that will not happen. An anonymous Labour source, one of those, admittedly, spoke to Politics Home and told them the whips have assured people that to here will not be selected. But isn't that up to his constituents? Isn't that up to his consti constituency Labour Party? Ah oh, yes, the CLP, the constituents. Well, electoral interference has defined Starmer's leadership, hasn't it? Seeing entire constituency Labour Party executives quit en masse, on multiple occasions, as London Labour and Starmer and his, light and his ilk, his team, interfere to bring about Starmer's desired outcome in selections. And it has happened so often and so blatantly now that they are emboldened enough to tell the press that that is exactly what is going to happen here before they've even done it. However, Labour could be as good as throwing the seat away if they do go down this road with Ali. We know Muslim voters are getting organised right now, as I covered in a video yesterday, with a new organisation called the Muslim Vote. Muslims basically organising who to vote for, putting up their own candidates if needs be, to ensure their views don't continue to get ignored. And Ali's seat at Birmingham Hall Green has the second highest constituency concentration of Muslim voters in the country. 49.9% of people there identify as Muslim. One in two, basically. And right now, they have an MP speaking up for them. But Labour are telling them they're going to deny him as a vote option to them at the next election because he is standing up for Muslims, standing up for the people of Gaza. Tahir Ali has a majority of 28,508, but with over 40,000 Muslims living in his seat, Labour can easily lose that, despite that majority, with a concerted, organised effort. Twitter, as ever, has had its say, condemning Starmer and co for their plotting and their actions against Kate Osamore and Tahir Ali. Joe Skeeping has written... Old enough to remember when a party threatening its own MPs with deselection was a terrifying and sinister plot against democracy that merited front page national news coverage. Well, indeed, it's very, very true. Curtis Daly from the Turn Left YouTube channel, excellent channel, by the way, you should come over there and watch his stuff, wrote, absolutely vile from Labour, deselecting two MPs of colour for standing up for Palestinians. Everything they accuse Corbyn of, Stalinist dictatorship as leader, is true of Stormer. I will never vote Labour with these sort in charge. And I totally associate myself with that comment as well. A socialist voice writes, Labour is institutionally racist under Sakir Starmer. Two MPs of colour are to be deselected by pro-genocide Zionists as punishment for condemning Israel's war crimes in Gaza. Nearly 30,000 Palestinians killed. One would never believe Labour is led by a human rights lawyer. And doesn't that just sum it all up? I've said it before and I will say it again. A changing government now will not bring any change in how this country is run if you pick Labour over the Tories, nor this country's attitude towards other states and other people. If we want change, we cannot be voting Labour any more than we'd contemplate voting Tory. Because right now there is zero difference, and I don't think that is likely to change. Voting intention amongst Muslim voters might just be shifting, and we all need to think likewise too, perhaps. I covered the inception of the Muslim vote the other day in more detail, how quickly they have grown, how organised they are, and they really ought to be terrifying Labour, given how many seats they can influence, and fully intend to do that, how equipped they are to do that. And you should absolutely watch this video next to learn all about that. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.